Hi, I'm Chris Landerson. This is Maker Size. In a previous episode, you saw me make a chainsaw mill from scratch, and in this episode, I'm gonna demonstrate how I use it. You may recall last year, I uh, came up to my parents' place and I cut up a tree that had fallen over and I really, my chainsaw mill that I had at the time wasn't quite large enough to be able to process those logs into lumber. So I built this larger chainsaw mill with the intention of being able to uh, complete sawing up those logs into lumber. So hopefully I'll be able to use those and I'll give you a little bit of a uh, demonstration of how to use this chainsaw mill. I built this in a previous video, and if you haven't seen it, you should definitely check that out. I'll have a link down in the description as well as in the cards. The chainsaw mill works by cutting logs into slices, and it does this on the basis of an initial reference cut that's made on a set of guides. Those guides establish that initial cut, and that cut is used as the reference for subsequent cuts. You can cut different thicknesses of slabs. This is about a one inch thick board, but I don't recommend that thickness on account of kind of low efficiency. After I made a couple test cuts down in the woods where the tree fell, I decided I'd rather work on some level ground. So I used my truck to kind of drag these logs up the hill. Uh, that really uh, was a, kind of a challenging thing. My truck was slipping all over the place. It's not a four-wheel drive vehicle, and uh, it was quite a bit of work getting them up the hill. And not only was it a lot of work to get them up the hill, they got filthy. I mean, the first one that was right up there at the top wasn't too terribly bad, but the farther they got down the hill, the worse and worse it got. I mean, I was effectively dragging these logs behind my truck like a plow, and they were just picking up all this dirt caked into the bark. And for your reference, getting your logs dirty like this prior to milling them using a chainsaw mill is a bad idea because it causes you to have to sharpen your chain a lot more frequently than you otherwise would. In the past, I have gone all day with a ripping chain without sharpening it. That was on poplar. This is oak, so it's a little bit harder wood here, but I had to sharpen my chain so much more frequently on account of how dirty they were that uh, I think it really pays to be careful with your logs and try to avoid any kind of dirt contamination on the bark prior to milling them. Another thing that pays is to have help. These slabs are extremely heavy. A two, three inch slab like that probably weighs a couple hundred pounds and uh, moving them around by yourself is no fun. Another thing is to mill downhill. It's a lot easier milling downhill even with the winch. Well, I've talked a lot about tips for successful milling, but let's talk a little bit about the setup of this particular chainsaw mill. One of the first things I do is make sure that the clamps are pretty well up into the deck as far as they'll go. And that allows me to pretty well set the width of the clamps on the bar uh, so that it won't bind as I raise and lower the deck. Uh, the next thing I do is I feed the bar into the clamps and then I kind of tighten up a little bit on each end and adjust it until it's roughly centered between the clamp pads and then I tighten down the screws on each clamp. Then I set the depth of the guides and get started milling. You end up producing two slabs for each log that you mill, at least if you mill them the way I do. I take a log and then I select which direction I want to mill, and this can be based on figure that I expect in the wood, or yield based on checking and things like that. Effectively, I pick the top and then I mount a bracket on one end and there's no real magic to how this is oriented. It pretty much needs to be roughly parallel to the ground, but these brackets are the surfaces on which the longitudinal rails mount. These rails are the guide system for the very first cut, and it's important that they are both planar. This means they're not skew, so you want to make sure that uh, those rails are parallel. And you can do this using winding sticks, or you can eyeball it like I did in this case, when I didn't have my winding sticks. Uh, just 
kind of by eyeballing the top surface of those rails. And then you go back with the uh, lag bolt on that adjustable corner and secure it in place. I like these locking pliers. They're like welding clamps. I think these are Harbor Freight, like $2 clamps. But they're just about perfect for my setup because I can clamp the rails to those brackets and it leaves clearance for my chainsaw mill to just squeeze in and start that cut. One tip that I've learned from using this particular setup and these particular rails is the rails that you select really should be about two feet longer than the logs you're trying to mill. This gives you a foot in excess of each end to start and finish your cuts with the chainsaw mill. Although it's possible to get the chainsaw started and finish safely, it really doesn't leave a lot of room for uh, error when doing it without those extended rails. So that's, that's a tip I highly recommend is to have your rails about a foot longer on either end than the logs you're trying to mill. Now another tip is I like to go ahead and make all my guide cuts at one time. Typically, you know, when I'm starting work at a particular site, I will set up the guides and cut all the tops. And that way I can come back later and just batch out the slabs with a single setting of the deck height on the chainsaw mill. If you're milling a dirty log, you're gonna have to sharpen your chain a lot. Did I mention that already? When using the hand winch on this mill, you can attach it to a tree, or what I like to do is just use my chainsaw wrench and drive it into the ground as a stake, and from that fixed point, you can operate the hand crank winch to help you drive the chainsaw mill through the logs. Regarding the speed of my cuts, I've got a still MS391 powerhead. It's driving a 3 8 inch ripping chain and I'm getting about 12 minutes or so for a 2 foot wide board, 8 foot long, and that's red oak. Now it'll go much quicker in a softer wood, and it goes slower with uh, wider cuts, harder species of wood, and dull chains. That just gives you a little bit of a point of reference relative to time I'm expecting on my setup. I say I spent an average of about 10 minutes sharpening my chain between each cut. I think I was doing good to get about, oh, two slabs out of 30 or 40 minutes. And uh, it really, it took me a couple days to make all these cuts. Uh, and that again, I think that's a big function of these logs just being dirty. I can't stress it enough. Clean logs, they really boost efficiency. I'm really happy that I got so many slabs out of this red oak tree. And uh, one of the things that I did kind of while I was there on site is I tried to use a broom to dust them off pretty well. And that's kind of important because you don't want a lot of mildew that will be kind of cultivated by having really dusty slabs. I loaded them up in my pickup and my parents live about an hour and a half from where I do now. so. Loaded them up in the pickup and then hauled them and really it was a bit <laughs> a bit overloaded uh, for my half ton pickup truck. But, uh, it, you know, it, it got them home all right. And uh, fortunately, I had some help to get them unloaded. You really need help when you're moving these slabs around. Uh, it's an easy way to kind of injure yourself, I think. So uh, definitely want to try to arrange for some help. Uh, my father-in-law is the guy helping me here, and, uh, you know, just a special thanks to him. He's really about the best father-in-law a guy could ask for, and uh, stacking those slabs there was no easy chore, so I really appreciate that, and glad they're stacked and drying in the shed over at the property. I have chainsaw mill plans available for this mill in case you think you want to build one. I hope it inspires you to exercise your inner maker, and thanks for watching.